it's a 66 year old female uh, and she has been dizzy for about two weeks um, she had uh, quite severe head trauma where she uh, fell backwards and uh, she hit her head on uh, concrete and afterwards she's been feeling uh, quite dizzy especially in specific uh, positions and what she complains about is positional vertigo that lasts for seconds whenever she changes her position. Before I do any testing for positional nystagmus, I always want to make sure that the patient does not have any other types of nystagmus that might influence the nystagmus observed during the positional testing. As stated earlier, it's very important to examine if the patient has any spontaneous and or gaze-induced nystagmus before you do any positional testing. I look for any spontaneous nystagmus with and without vision denied, and I also observe if there is any gaze-induced nystagmus. In this case, neither spontaneous nor gaze-induced nystagmus is observed. As shown and described in the diagnostics section, the patient is moved quickly with short rotations to either side in the yaw axis to examine the horizontal VORR function. Please note that the previous bilateral rotationally induced nystagmus is nicely suppressed during the rotations to either side with fixation. Initially, a left dix hallpike test was performed. If positional nystagmus is observed, latency should also be noted. However, in this case, it's quite hard to conclude if there is any latency because of the frequent eye blinks. Continuous upbeat and rotational nystagmus is observed throughout the observation period with the patient positioned in the left dixalpike position. The patient complains of a continuous concomitant spinning sensation throughout the entire dixalpike test position. Also, even not shown in the video, always look for any reversal of nystagmus when the patient is placed in the upright position following testing. Then a right dix pike test was performed. Again, Observe and note any latency before observation of positional nystagmus. Also observe and describe if the induced positional nystagmus is continuous or follows a 10 to 30 seconds crescendo-decrescendo pattern. Continuous upbeat and rotational nystagmus is again observed throughout the observation period whenever the patient is positioned in the right dix hall pipe position. The patient also complains of a continuous concomitant spinning sensation throughout the entire right dix hall pike test position. Please also remember to look for any reversal of nystagmus when the patient is placed in the upright position again. With the patient in the left supine roll test position, instantaneous and persisting positional nystagmus is observed. Please also note that the observed positional nystagmus is upbeating and rotational and continues as long as the patient is kept in this test position. With the patient in the right supine roll test position, 
instantaneous and persisting positional nystagmus is observed. Please also note that the observed positional nystagmus is upbeating and rotational and is present as long as the patient is kept in this test position. When interpreting the observed nystagmus, please include knowledge of UWALT's first law as well as the prevailing diagnostic criteria related to benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. As you can tell from the diagnostics, she uh, actually had posterior BPPV uh, in both her posterior canals and the subtype of fucal lithiasis because it lasted for uh, the amount of time that she was positioned in every Dix Hall pack position. And that's quite typical for a um, head trauma patient that they actually get, get bilateral disease and the bilateral affection of both posterior canals. With bilateral cases, I often treat the most symptomatic canal at the initial visit and then have the patient come back for a follow-up treatment of the BPPV located on the contralateral side. This patient was most symptomatic on the right side, so therefore a right potentiated Ebling maneuver was chosen and is demonstrated here. The patient is initially turned 45 degrees to the right and then moved back what's approximately 135 degrees. Positional nystagmus is observed and 10 kinetic impulses are applied. The patient is then turned 45 degrees to the non-treatment side, in this case the left side, and 10 impulses are applied in this position. As you can tell from the video, the patient is turned 45 degrees towards the non-treated side four times consecutively, and by including the initial position, 10 kinetic impulses are applied in five positions in total. Following a total of a 180 degree turn in the yaw axis, the patient is then positioned upright. When performing this maneuver, please include observation and registration of the presence of positional nystagmus in every position during the repositional maneuver, including the upright position where observation of liberatory nystagmus should be anticipated, despite the fact that this finding is not obligatory. Treatment of posterior canal BPPV with a potentiated epilim maneuver is one out of several repositional maneuvers available with the TRV chair. Other posterior BPPV treatment options with the TRV chair include a standard epilim maneuver, the Samant maneuver with or without kinetic impulses applied, as well as a 360 degree liberation maneuver.